am Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing Looking for Alaska by John Green. I know what you're thinking. It's about damn time. I know. This is John Green's first book. It's won the Prince Award. Everyone references it all the time. It's being adapted into a miniseries for Hulu. It's weird that I haven't read it yet. I put it off for so long because when I first discovered YouTube and I discovered the Vlogbrothers, everyone was comparing this to Catcher in the Rye. And back then, what was I? Like 18, 19? I still had so many bad memories about the Catcher in the Rye in high school. Freshman year of high school, I had to read it for summer reading and I hated it. I just didn't like it. He was whining and no and I was like, I am not looking for that. And this is nothing like Catcher in the Rye. I can see where there are themes and it's like, you know, coming into yourself, experiencing the world outside your parent bubble. Like I see that, I see those themes, but like this is John and that was J.D. Salinger. Different authors and they're different books and they have different styles. And I really enjoyed reading this book. I really enjoyed reading all of John's books. But it's so weird because when someone asks me like, which one's my favorite? I always have so much trouble because of various reasons. With Turtles All The Way Down, it was too close to my anxieties. Like so close that I can't love, love, love it. I can really appreciate it and it's fantastic. It was just scary how close it was to my anxiety. And I, I had to take so many breaks during it. Paper I really enjoyed but like it wasn't my favorite favorite Tipios was like an Everest for me to climb because of all the medical stuff in it freaked me out and I couldn't read it for so long and I finally did and I loved it so this is probably my favorite John Green novel but it still is hard for me like all of his books are this challenge for me to read because so many of them deal with things that really make me anxious looking for Alaska was completely different I was putting this off because I just heard it was like catcher in the rye which is dumb if that's why you're putting it off don't. Anyway, it was great. Now that I've finished my first book, I'm finding it so fascinating to reassess or read in general other authors' first books, especially authors that are established now that I, you know, kind of was looking at their books differently when I read them when I was younger. I feel like in a lot of ways that first story that comes out of you reflects something really pivotal or something that you hold so dear to your heart. And it was really cool to read John's first book. You know, you always hear John talk about how he used to smoke and there is so much smoking and looking for Alaska. I was like, guys, stop smoking. Smoking is so bad for you. If you don't know, Looking for Alaska is a story of a boy named Miles going into his junior year. He feels like he's been living in this life rut, very sheltered, and he's in search of the great perhaps, an adventure, life-changing, interesting moments to add to his story. So he decides that he wants to go to boarding school, the boarding school that his dad went to. This is his first year at boarding school, and he's living away from home, and he has a roommate, and he's meeting new people, and he's meeting girls, and it was really, really great. I was reading this from a position where I knew what was gonna happen because I hadn't read it for so long and it's been out for so long I've been spoiled that you know, the thing that happens and it happens in it just like the fault in our stars like I was spoiled when I went into that but it kind of helped me because I was so neurotic about the medical stuff. I'm gonna give Looking for Alaska an A-. minus. It's always so fascinating to read from John's male characters. I feel like I just learned so much about being in the head of a teenage boy and it's so different to the reading experience. Like any contemporary that has the same themes, but like from a female perspective is so different. Like you relate to them in such a different way. That's gonna be it for my non-spoilery section. I would imagine most of you have read this book already, but if you haven't, definitely recommend it. It's such a quick read. It's only like 250 pages I want to say. Hit that up, come back, and we can discuss it together. Goodbye non-spoilery folk. Goodbye! <laughs> okay. I quickly want to talk about this cover. This is a cover that I've been seeing for ages and I always imagined that this was smoke coming from a blown out candle. In a way it is, it's kind of like they snuffed out the light of Alaska but also you know there's so much smoke in this book. I feel like it has just a lot of metaphorical stuff going on. We also have Alaska building that mega candle. Again there's the metaphorical like, getting snuffed out of that. I'm so eloquent today. I really enjoyed learning all this stuff about last words. Honestly, it's something that I've never thought about personally, and I've heard people talking about last words just in passing when they reference Looking for Alaska, but of course I hadn't read it, so I didn't know how that related. But it was so cool. I just learned that John Adams and Thomas Jefferson died on the same day on July 4th in 1826, and John Adams' last words were Thomas Jefferson still lives, and then Thomas Jefferson had died earlier that day. This is just said in the after 
afterward, I was really looking forward to reading John's first acknowledgments letter, and there's no acknowledgments! There's only this some last words on last words, where he talks about last words and his fascination with them and when it started. I really enjoyed how John explored the theme of death in this book. We know that's something he likes to explore all the time. Dear Hank and John is a comedy podcast about death. How he describes being a teenager and how you feel like you're invincible, and then when Alaska dies, he just can't accept that he's just gone poof. Like, that's it. it. It's so sudden. It's such a slap to the face. Like, wow. People just die and there's nothing you can do about it. It was heartbreaking and so well written. The pranks were fun, but also so anxiety ridden. Firstly, I didn't understand why we were willing to ever risk expulsion for these pranks. And the first one when Miles almost died was terrifying. And then how the other kids destroyed all of Alaska's books and people were like appreciative of that prank. And I was just like, no, no, this is inexcusable. No, you've crossed the line. Books are not replaceable like that. I it just, how dare you? How dare you? Alaska was devastated and people were like, mm, wow, that was a good idea. I'm just, no. No, 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 it wasn't. It was a terrible, cruel, soul-ripping idea. Another concept I really loved was the great perhaps. Because that's something that I was searching for in my late teens as well that I could never really put into words. It was just all around such a thought-provoking, well-written book, like all of John's books are. And I think all the characters felt really real and grounded, and I like how it took place before cell phones, and they always had to use the payphone. I like how Miles always describes his parents as nice people. Like, there are such nice people. <laughs> Who says that about their parents, like, when you're a teenager? I don't know. Miles does. I really enjoyed the colonel and his mom. I loved when they all went to Thanksgiving together. That was one of my favorite parts of the book. Oh my gosh, the infamous blowjob scene. I've heard so much about this in just snippets throughout the last 10 years. When people talk about looking for Alaska, they're like, oh, the blowjob scene. So I was waiting for the blowjob to come from Alaska. Then it ended up coming from Lara. And it was so insane to me that they got up and went and asked Alaska how it goes. It was funny in the most uncomfortable way. Like, oh God, oh God, is this actually happening? Oh God. Every time they had to distract the eagle to like steal something from him or I don't know, sneak some sort of prank preparation, scared the crap out of me. Again, what are you doing? You're gonna get in trouble. I can't. This poor man, this poor man is just trying to do his job. You're making it so difficult. I really appreciated though how at the end, after the stripper prank, he came by their room and kind of just gave them a nod of appreciation for Alaska. That was really nice. He's a cool guy. He's just, this is his job. He has to do it. You guys keep being rebels. Stop smoking. God. Oh, I really like this inside flap. First drink, first prank, first friend, first girl, last words. Wow. Those are all my thoughts on looking for Alaska. I'm just, I'm so glad I've read it now. I'm in the inn. I know what happens in it. I'm ready for the Hulu series. I'm pumped. My name is Christine. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this book. Where it falls for you on the John Green scale. Where does it fall for me? I think The Fault in Our Stars is at the top. And then I don't know where to place turtles. I guess I'll place turtles second. No, third. Okay, I think it goes Fault, Alaska, Turtles, Paper Towns, Catherines. Yeah. I make videos every Tuesday. I'm at XTeenMay on Twitter and Instagram. I will see you next time. Goodbye!